Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So the Witcher 3 next gen update has just been released. And if you didn't already know, the Witcher 3 is a Windows only game that actually works great on Apple Silicon Macs. It can be run through a compatibility layer called Crossover, which translates Windows graphics API calls into macOS compatible API calls. And the Witcher 3 is one of the best Crossover compatible games. However, the latest next gen update has broken some compatibility with Crossover, but these issues can actually be worked around. Now we're not going to get all of the next gen features, for example, DirectX 12 support or ray tracing, but we can make use of some of the new Netflix inspired content and also new features like photo mode. And one surprising thing is that the new patch also allows for The Witcher 3 to run through Windows 11 ARM through Parallels. So today we're going to go through a full crossover tutorial. I'm going to show you how to get the latest gen update working through crossover. I'll also show you how to enable classic mode. And we're also going to be looking at running the game through Parallels as well. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So if you click on the link in the description, you're going to be taken straight to the store page and you're going to have a 25% promo code automatically applied to the store page. If you do decide to make a purchase, then I'll receive a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the videos that I create. So what I do recommend doing here is clicking the buy now button and then making a purchase of the software or alternatively today, what we're going to do is try out crossover free. This allows you to make use of the 14 day free trial. And once you've decided to make a purchase, you can just follow the link again, and then you can get this 25% discount. So here we're going to press try now just to see what it's like. And then we're going to scroll down. So all you need to do is to enter your name and email address, and then you can go ahead and download the trial. So it's saying here that crossover Mac download has started. So once the download's complete, we're going to go ahead and minimize this. Then we're going to go to finder, and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. So once the file's downloaded, we're going to have the crossover.zip. And what we're going to do is to double click and then extract this application. So once the file has extracted, what we're going to do is to drag and drop this into our applications folder and then let go. So we're going to go to applications and then scroll down and then we're going to find crossover. So just double click on this to launch it for the first time. So it's saying, are you sure you want to open this app? Press open. And now crossover 22 has installed and it's asking us what applications what we want to install. So the very first thing I'm going to show you is how to install Steam. So I'm going to click on the Steam icon or you can do a search for it at the top here and you can click on the Steam icon here. And then we have the option here on the top right hand side to click the install button and then this is automatically going to create what's called a bottle and then it's going to install the steam application we're going to follow through the various steps so we're going to get various prompts to install certain things for example fonts basically just press yes and then next onto every single window to complete the setup process here it's installing the parser setup press next i accept the next next install finish so now we have the windows steam setup installer here we're going to press next select our language select the default location and press install now we can go ahead and run steam now we have the Windows Steam login page opened up here. So you're going to log in with your Steam account, or if you don't have one already, then just create a free account here. So now that the Windows version of Steam is installed, basically any game that you can download here is going to be the Windows version running through the crossover compatibility layer. And this is going to allow a ton of games to install and play on Apple Silicon and Macs, which weren't previously available. So once we've logged into Steam, what we're going to do is go to the library and we're going to click on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now what we're going to do is to press the install button and then we're going to go ahead and install it into its default location, press next. Here we're going to agree to the end user licensing agreement and it's going to go ahead and start the download process. So just wait for this part to complete before we can move on to the next step and then we can choose between downloading the classic or the new version or the next gen upgrade. Click finish here. So once we've downloaded The Witcher 3, if we press the play button, then unfortunately this is not going to launch correctly. So it's going to say that it's running. You're going to get a brief black screen and unfortunately it's going to crash. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is to navigate to our Witcher 3 install. So go back to crossover, we control click on Steam, go to open C drive here. And then within our bottle, the default location is going to be located within program files under Steam. Then scroll down to Steam apps, common, double click, and then go into The Witcher 3. And within The Witcher 3, what we need to do is to make an edit to this launcher configuration.json, control click, click open with, and then open with with text edit. Within the launcher configuration.json, we're going to change the fallback to DirectX 11 instead of DirectX 12. And then once we're done here, we're going to press file and then save. And then that's going to save that file. Then back within Steam, we're going to right click on the game and then go to properties. If you can't see the properties window, just minimize. Then we're going to use this launch option, which is dash dash launcher dash skip. Close this. And now when we launch the game, it's going to skip the launcher and it's going to open the DirectX 11 version of the game. 
So now I've got the patch 4.0 highlights, including new content, photo mode, cross progression, integrated mods, and better controls. So we can go past this by pressing E. We're gonna disagree about sharing data. And here we can see we've got the 4.00 update. So what's quite important is that if we're using this update, we're gonna to go to options. If you click on options, it's gonna pause for a few seconds. So this is gonna happen every time you enter the options menu. So don't worry about that. You need to wait about 30 seconds before we get to this menu and then gonna press video, go to graphics. So here I'm gonna select the high preset and I'm gonna scroll down down, and then I want to make sure that NVIDIA Hairworks is turned off. So this is going to make the game crash if you don't have this turned off. So just be aware of that. Then close this, go back. And now we can go ahead and load up our game. So anecdotally, I can definitely feel like there is a bit more stuttering in this game. You can see the red lines on the frame counter on the top left. And basically every time there's a red line, it's basically doing some shader compilation stuttering. And I can feel that there's a little bit more on this version compared to the classic version. So one reason that you might want to continue using the next gen update is because you might want to take advantage of some new features. For example, if you press the U key, then you can enter the photo mode. So this is basically a freeform camera and you can do things like tweak the FOV, which we can do things like pose in different angles. We can tweak depth of field, turn on autofocus, change the aperture, etc. And these are some pretty cool features. However, if you want to get the best possible performance, I would suggest testing out the classic mode. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to enable classic mode to basically get the version of The Witcher 3 that we had before the next gen update. And it does require basically the same fixes in order to get it to work. So if we go back to our Witcher 3 installation, what we can do is to switch to beta mode from here. What we can do is right click on the game and then we can go down here and click on properties. And if we can't see the window, it's probably because it's behind. And what we can do now is click on the betas tab here. And then we have the option here to select a beta to opt into. So right now by default, we're gonna be downloading the next gen upgrade which is not necessarily what you want. What you can do is click on classic button here, and then this is gonna allow us to download the previous version which worked fine, The Witcher 3 patch 1.3.2. So if we select this now and then close this, and then this is gonna be downloading a 43.4 gigabyte file instead, which is basically what The Witcher was before the next gen upgrade. So here we're just gonna allow this to complete its download, and then we can move on to the next step. So go back to crossover, we control click on Steam, go to open C drive here, and then within our bottle, the default location is gonna be located within program files under Steam, then scroll down to Steam apps, common, double click, and then go into The Witcher 3. And within The Witcher 3, what we need to do is to make an edit to this launcher configuration.json, control click, click open with, and then open with text edit. Within the launcher configuration.json, we're gonna change the fallback to DirectX 11 instead of DirectX 12. And then once we're done here, we're gonna press file and then save, and then that's gonna save that file. So in order to launch the game and to bypass the launcher, what we're gonna do is to right click on the game itself, go to properties, and then we're gonna go to launch options. And then we're gonna type in dash dash launcher dash skip, and then close this. And now when we press the play button, that's gonna launch directly without the red launcher. So now in the game, and you can see that we are on version 1.3.2 instead of 4.0.0. So we're on the classic update. So we're gonna click on options, which is gonna result in about a 30 second pause, which is normal. And then we're gonna to go to the graphics menu. So here we're gonna set the graphics preset to high. However, by default, it's gonna to want to change the NVIDIA Hairworks onto on. We wanna turn this off entirely. So now that we've turned it off, we can go ahead and launch the game. So as you can see, the Witcher 3 is running great with the 1.32 classic version. And if you want to get the best possible performance, this is probably the correct configuration for you. However, the latest patch and the classic patch have also enabled another way to run the Witcher 3 on Apple Silicon Max, which wasn't previously available. And that is by running the game through a virtual machine software called Parallels, which I'm gonna show you how to do now. So if you haven't installed Parallels already, then please make sure to follow the link in the description for my video tutorial. So once Parallels, Windows 11 ARM and Steam are installed, all we need to do is to download The Witcher 3. And then here we're gonna press the play button. Agree here, yes. So with Parallels, we don't have the issue with Red Launcher. We can press continue without account. Here we can make sure to select DirectX 11, press play. So now the game is loaded up. What we're gonna do is to maximize our Parallels window. And then within the game here, we're gonna to go to options, video, display. So I'm gonna change this to full screen and then resolution at 1080p, which is the resolution I'm recording at. It's gonna full screen. I'm gonna change the graphics preset to high. And then we're gonna make sure that the hair works is turned off. And then we're gonna load up a game. 
Now the performance isn't that good. There's a lot of stuttering and the frame rate will drop into the tens. And on the M1 Max chip, this isn't particularly good news. So crossover is definitely the preferred way to play this game. However, I am aware that the crossover version does have some bugs, for example, some invisible enemies later into the game. So if someone does test this on parallels, please let me know if the same bug still exists. It's very impressive that this game runs at all. After all, this is an x86 64-bit game being emulated under Windows. Windows 11 ARM being run under virtual machine on the Apple Silicon Mac ARM architecture. So it's pretty amazing we're able to hit 60 FPS at all in large parts of this game. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.